Hi, Dr. Maske. How are you doing today? Hey, good evening. Good evening. Thanks, Greg, for having me. No worries. Thank you very much for your time. I know you're an extremely busy man, so uh, we have this short window uh, to have a chat. Uh, just a little bit of a background. Uh, I heard about the bloodline uh, last year, and uh, I got to meet you, and I donated some blood uh, a couple of months ago, and I was just blown away by the whole setup of the uh, of your bloodline. I mean, it's a it's not just going in there and donating blood. It's there's music, there's art, there's all stalls there. You, you can buy paintings and it, like carnival, yeah. So <coughs> first off, just tell us a little bit about the bloodline and and um, maybe talk about uh, the the year in review for 2023 so far. What's been, happened so far? Yeah. So uh, 2011 November, you know, I was. Uh, I was in China, and then of course I'd already been in China, Shanghai at the time. I walked out of the my operating room, and I was just uh, walking down the hallway in the the old building of this hospital, and I saw this poster for a blood donation happening that day. Right, so I walked in, and I sort of like uh, gave the uh, uh, my 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 blood, and pretty soon I realized there were a lot of people who were taking my interview, and at that time I didn't really uh, understand why. Uh, but then I came to realize later that I was the first one donating blood that day. Mm. And after my blood donation, then uh, the people from the Shanghai Blood Center reached out to me and said, would you like to volunteer in our activities? And I said, like, yeah, why not? I would, I would really love to do this. Now, going back, I gave my first blood donation when I was 18 years old. And that was very meaningful for me. At least I actually uh, came back on my bike without telling my mom. And then she found my blood donation card under my bed. Right. Away and hidden after many, many, many months. And she confronted me and said, did you donate blood? And I was like, I very, you know, sort of awkwardly told her, yes. <laughs> she said, so why didn't you tell me, you know? So, yeah. so it, was, it, was, it was good. And then, uh, then later down the road, we were working back home in Nepal in a, in a children's hospital. Yeah. And then the, the next time was I was as an intern working in pediatric surgery. And then uh, at a time back in that country, you know, people actually, families had to replace blood for their, for their family members. So we were operating on a little child and then he needed blood and then the, we called the, the father who was underweight, very poor, very small. And then, so we were, uh, so I then described and I volunteered to go down and donate blood. And the feeling I had from that blood donation was so immense and so powerful, you know. So of course I was donating blood regularly back home, but after coming to China, that was the first time I actually got to donate blood in that, in mm -hmm. that event. And then I started working with China Blood Center and very soon realized that there is sort of like a little hesitancy among the, 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 the local culture here to, to actually do, donate blood freely, you know, because I think it's partly to do with the culture, partly to do with the yin and the yang and the, the heat and the, the cold in the body. Is it, is, it because, is it because they don't understand the reasons why or do they think that they're, it's like they're scared of doing it? Or? Yeah, so I think it's partly that culture of uh, the, 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 the being afraid to give blood, partly because of, of the way they're brought up with the, with the, with the, the, the heat and the, I, I, you know, the TCM philosophy per se. So then I realized the need for creating bloodline, you know, and then of course uh, we were already working with Shanghai Blood Center there. Then uh, as, as volunteers, then we said we can make it much better, you know, so that's when uh, I had scribbled down a few ideas in my head down on a piece of paper. Uh, started looking out for a few friends or people I sort of knew through uh, uh, contacts that were sort of doing the same thing and just uniting people together, you know, and yeah. then in, into the cause. The breaking moment was a French girl that was visiting Shanghai, uh, visiting her boyfriend, and they were on a scooter and she had a road traffic accident. Mm. So uh, she went to a local hospital. I think they missed the diagnosis. And at that time I was still in general surgery. And then so uh, she came to our hospital and it appeared she was bleeding from the liver. So there was an internal bleed and she was losing blood and she was O negative, right? Now you have to understand here, the negative blood types are pretty rare all over the world. Yes. But in China, it's extremely rare. So it's in, in every 
three in a, a thousand people, three to four in a thousand people will have negative type bloods. So she was O negative and getting that blood would be pretty difficult. So I had sent out a little call on my WeChat yeah. to people and friends that were sort of involved in the same uh, cause saying, we'll need some blood. Can you please uh, respond right. to this yeah. call, right? You know, during the surgery, my phone kept on ringing and ringing and ringing to a point there were over 80 calls. I had wow. a, a nursing staff to just take the calls and, well, Dr. Mask will call you back. Dr. Mask will call you back. And so that gave me a sort of like, and it was an eye opener per se, because it gave me a, 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 this thought that there are actually people who are really willing to help each other, you know, complete strangers, right? So yes. when it comes to these emergencies and the need, and, and, and when you're talking about life, I mean, people are very willing to give, right? Yeah. So I thought this is the answer, you know, this is the calling. We have to put a group together and we call it. So then came the, the idea of brainstorming and looking for a logo and talking with the with the local Shana Blood Center and trying to put it in, 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 in force. And then I remember the first event we ever had and the one you attended, the Halloween, the first event we had, which was over five years ago, had around 25 to 30 people. Right. That's it. And then out of those 25 to 30 people, we were in a small corner of Shana Blood Center. Right. <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> and then over time, we have just uh, grown. And, and, and that's what uh, makes us so happy and proud, you know. So uh, going back to the introduction of Bloodline, we focus on primarily three things. OK, so number one is this big sized uh, blood donation camps. So uh, basically it's this campaigns where which one, one of those, those, those you attended, right? So yes. we try to change this very, you know, stereotype blood donation program where you come and donate blood, you get a little certificate and you give it a little bow and you leave. You know, we wanted to change that into something that was very trendy and happening and trying to change the young mindsets at the same time. Yes. So that's when we came up with the idea of cosplay and making it like a little party and yes. thing. And we actually wanted children to come along and sit on their patient, their, their, their dad or mom's lap and absorb the idea of their parents being uh, superheroes, right? Saving a life. Yes. So, so that from a very young mindset that sort of, you know, changes their mindset into thinking of this as a very normal thing to do as a, as a community give back action, right? Yes. So, so I think as the last five, six years, it has the, the size has just grown of these events, you know? So we have now the complete support of the China government, the diplomatic uh, mission, and a whole lot of over 150 partners, all willing to give, you know? The one thing that makes Bloodline different from the rest of the charities is we do not accept money, you know, cash. So we accept everything else, especially blood, right? Yes. So that is the first thing, uh, blood donation campaigns. The second thing which people don't know a lot about is direct appeals or emergencies. So anyone in these 14, 15 cities, we have a presence in, 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 in China. Yes. If there is a need for blood, then they can reach out to us and we have a process where we very, very, very verify the need and then we send out donors, you know, and, 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 and then uh, the donors are actually giving back to the community, to the city, and that blood replicates into sort of like uh, the, the person in need getting the blood. So we've saved a lot of lives and lost a few that way too, you know. And the last but the most important I personally feel is this public awareness. Our our vision uh, is for public awareness. So so. That's where we have started combining with a lot of these uh, companies, especially young consumer uh, market, you know, providers yeah. and having them also sort of like, you know, involving them to to create a very positive outlook, a very positive, you know, and the, the thing is, I see over the last five to 10 years, things are changing. It's looking really good because I now see this younger population in Shanghai, you know, young college kids and people who started just working and usually around, you know, 18 to 30 years, that population age group are now very willing to come out and donate blood. And I think it's mm -hmm. finally striking in. So, and there's, and, and everything is about being very trendy blood. We're, yes. so we're, that, that is one of our aims and giving 
bloody is almost we want to make it like a very trendy thing to do. You know, yes. I'm wearing this branded sure. shoe. I'm I'm going out to and and, and doing this particular yoga in a, in a gym, and I'm donating. I'm a blood donor. I'm yes. a hero, you know? So so that's the sort of message we want to get across to the community, and I I, I feel we're we're really worth uh, achieving our goals. Like it's really cool, a cool thing to do. Are the Chinese people now taking to it? Like you said before, they're, they're a little shy, shy yeah. to do it. What's happening now in 2023? Has that <coughs> changed. changed now? Yeah. So my, I'll give you an example of this to uh, to uh, to show my point, right? My eye has been with us for a number of years now. I don't even call her my eye. I call her. May May, right? My younger sister. So right. That's how close she is, you know. See, so she has seen me every month. You know, I do a lot of platelet donations. I do whole blood donations, and then she knows exactly what I eat, so that I don't fail my exams before the blood donation. She has seen me many times, and initially for her it was like, "You're giving too much," and then it was like, "You're not worried about your health. You got to look after your family too, and this and that." And then. So she saw that happening many times when she started attending our events and just seeing people donate. And she was like, wow, OK. And on the event, I think the last November 19 event, you know, she came to me and she said, I'm ready. I'm going to do it. Wow. You know, I was like, really? And then she's like, yes, let's do it. So she sat there and then she donated her blood. And of course, I could see that she was slightly anxious and worried and so on. But then after the donation, she was like, ah, I'm going to do it over and over again. This is this is really nice. I feel good, you know. So that was a defining moment for me because that was a very stereotyped uh, mindset, which over time and she is now all for blood donations, you know, so I, I was I was pretty, pretty impressed. And now I see a lot of my colleagues come over to our programs and also, you know, in the past they would say like, ah, no, I'm an animate or I've had this or I've, I've got a cold or but now they're like really open up and they're, they're, they're starting to give blood too. So in that sense, I think there is a very positive change in the community and I'm very happy about that. You know, I mean, I mean, also the slight change now is you cannot really donate to a person, right? You can donate to the community and it's the, the, the responsibility of the community or the, to, to, to give back to people in need. So that's also that, that change in policy is also making a very good impact. And and definitely you're making an impact. And I saw one of your last posts on WeChat where you've actually started winning some awards uh, for the bloodline as well. So congratulations, that's amazing Thank achievement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what does that mean to you to to get some get some recognition for <laughs> something that you're doing? Yeah. So the first time I got the award was in uh, 2019. You know. Yes. So it was like the top ten social service stories of Shanghai. And yes. Just to be nominated, we were like, hey, we're just a bunch of friends. And yeah. We're just doing this purely for helping out the community, right? We have no desires, no, no, no desires for personal gain. And it's just we're doing it purely because and people ask me, what do you get from doing bloodline? You know, how much do you earn? Like zero. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Then, but but then why you do it? You know, it's like because it feels good. And then but but there must be a reason. It's like, well, it's it's food for soul, right? Yeah. So uh and once I got that award, I was like surprised. But then the next award really caught me by surprise because it was the Shanghai Magnolia Silver Award. And I really it did not sink into the extent of that award until I was sitting there on the in, 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 in you know with the audience before we went up on stage, listening to all these other people, and I realized, oh my God, all these other people are big shots. You know, these are big CEOs of big companies and. You know, these are all uh, uh, financial companies, and and we are just a bunch of friends, yeah, really. Yeah. You know? So that was uh, quite shocking, and of course, pleasantly shocking. You know. Yes. And then came to the next uh, award with uh, being involved with several government, international, uh, and, and and international like foreigners forums, trying to you know sort of exchange ideas for the yes. development of Shanghai. Yes. And then finally, this time there was uh, the Shanghai Magnolia Gold. And also I was chosen to give that that speech on behalf of the uh, the awardees, you know, so so it was it was uh, quite something. So one thing for me that caught me by surprise and I'm very. Uh, 
very happy and surprised still is how the Shanghai government was able to, you know, actually visualize these little actions of, it's not like an organized big NGO, right? Yeah. There's a bunch of friends who are making an impact in the society. How they're able to, to see this thing happening in the community and actually award these people, you know? So that for me was quite something. And, and I'm very happy to say with now with the support of the Shanghai government, the diplomatic mission in Shanghai, you know, and a lot of other big companies, the companies like the like likes of Playmobil, Disney, Cirque du Soleil, and so on. You know, so I mean, it's all looking good. I mean, there's only one way forward. You know, that's it's it's, it's making a positive impact. Yes, and more the, positive impact. Yeah. And can a person come in any time, or is it the weekends like like we had it before? <laughs> well, we do do those big events, right? Right. But. At any point, 365 days a year, working time, all those mobile units or other stationary units, you know, anyone can go in there and we've set up a, a, a system, a green channel where you just go in and say, hey, I'm bloodline, right? And then you would go into any of those mobile units or stationary units, donate your blood. And I would have known, we would have known right away because they'll send a picture back. Yes. Uh, the bloodliners, we call them bloodliners, you know, giving, giving blood and that put a little play card. Now, one thing also which we strongly believe in is we have a bunch of partners, right? And uh, everyone involved in bloodline or the, the mission of bloodline, we add them into a group, uh, a representative of each of these companies into a group and we call it our advisory board. Yes. So we listen to all these people to what they have to say for us to make our, you know, uh, judgments as to how we should work in the future. Yes. And uh, so our belief is bloodline is not just a bunch of core members here who are doing this stuff. It's us, you, me, the, the, the companies that are involved with, the supporters, the blood donors, you know. Yes. So this community is bloodline. That's what we strongly believe in, you know, and, and also in our core members, we have uh, people from uh, Singapore, Italy, Holland, India, wow. I mean, name it, you know, Chinese locals, Shanghainese, we have from uh, Toga. So, so, so there's uh, everywhere, there's a good representation and we want to keep it that way. Do you have one in Australia? Uh, we had an Australian French guy right. uh, who unfortunately had to rep repatriate back, you know, oh, very, okay. very, 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 uh, Active guy, he was <laughs> <laughs> like the rest of the Aussies, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing so, I didn't like about him is he loved Vegemite. So, um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Come on, <laughs> come on. That that's a true Aussie if you're eating Vegemite. <laughs> so uh, I just want to go back a little bit, uh, back into uh, your family. Uh, so you grew up. Uh, you're from Nepal. Yeah. Uh, Kat Kathmandu. Yeah. I saw and. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you grew up with doctors as parents. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. So, so I can see that sort of similarity sort of because there was a quote from you uh, in a paraphrasing, but uh, it said that uh, my father used, if there was a person that couldn't afford the medicine, then he would just say, OK, I'll do it for free. I'll give you the medicine just to get better. And I can see like a trend with you, like now with the bloodline as well. So what did your mother and father, how did they sort of inspire you to sort of do this? Yeah. So, yeah, my dad was a chest physician, right? And I, as a younger kid, like five years, six years, even younger, I used to just sort of follow him to his, to his uh, chamber, his clinic. Yes. And I look back and I think that, that was so stupid because he was a tuberculosis specialist, you know. <laughs> right. But then, uh, yeah, so he would, you know, I would see him charge some patients, but at the same time, I would see him completely, you know, not charge his patients. Not... So I asked him what, what made him decide I'm going to charge this patient, but I would not charge this patient. So he, he told me it was very simple, you know, like when he was stripping off the patients to examine them, just by the condition of their undergarments. If it's torn or a little held together by a safety pin or mm -hmm. so you would just say, okay, this patient needs free medicine, you know? And 
growing up in in back home in Nepal, I went to a boarding school. I went to a, a missionary school, actually a Jesuit school, and uh, it was mostly American uh, teachers. So they also taught us the value of social service. So as kids, we used to be uh, mm. there's a boarding school, all boys school, right? So we'd be distributed in little groups of five students and be sent out to different villages, you know, villagers, and then we would just do whatever they wanted, including uh, sort of like you know harvesting the fields or you know. Uh, cleaning the cow sheds or etc cetera, etc cetera, you know yes. and growing up then we started uh, again working in one of the poorest uh, well well children's hospital for poor people where we would you know do a blood drive we would do medicine drive we would do uh, cash drives for for these patients who could not afford it and and then as as an intern we also had this way as as, as doing a, also my house job in in a hospital there we would basically, we had a system where we would collect from the rich and save it for the poor. Right. So we would, we would, you know, so we were sort of like those little leftovers and stuff that the rich could easily afford. We would sort of take them, keep it in a little closet somewhere. And when there was a patient that really had nothing, we'd use it for this patient. So those values sort of already was in, ingrained, you know, like, yes. like growing up. And uh, so the parents and then the school, everything was, so to me, social service, at least for me and my wife, you know, my family, and I try to teach the same to my daughter, social service should be a part of everyday life. You know? Great. I mean, the world is big, but it's so small. Yeah. And it's far beyond the confines of your own family and the house you want and this car you want, right? Mm. I mean, we are born, I, I, I seriously feel for a greater good beyond just the confines of your your life. Yes. So so that's, that's where it comes from. I mean, uh, you have to understand all the core members in Bloodline are all people who are working. They have their own jobs. They are... Uh, you know, fabric designers or designers or a diamond seller or, you know, like, like, you know, uh, working on e-commerce and so on. So they have their job. Right. It's only in the evenings that they come together and they're like, hey, let's do something, you know. Yeah, yeah, but right. everything is like for free service. But then, but then I'm really proud of the core team too. They, I mean, uh, they've given enough of their energy and time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, quick question, why China? Was it uh, a good opportunity to come here or why didn't you stay in, in Nepal? It was sort of like a good opportunity, I, I would say, you know, I was uh, I was in UK for a while and then okay. I, was in, uh, I was in Bangladesh for a while. And then I was in Nepal at that time in the middle of the, the, the civil war we had at that time. Mm. And there was an opening for a postgraduate degree studies. And just Without paying much attention to it, I applied and found myself on the short list and then on another short list and then on another short list and finally into the selection list. And I was like, oh my God. So I didn't even think about this. Should I, should I not, you know? So there was a moment where I really had to sit down and think, should I go to China? And <laughs> I, I have no idea, you know? So I, I decided to give it a go. Yes. And the first year, I have to say, was difficult. This was 19 years ago. Right. 19 years ago, right? Is it, is it, is, it, is, isn't Shanghai like the Wild West? It, it isn't what everybody calls it like back then? Like, uh, the yeah, world. it was. I mean, I mean, I still remember us coming down and I had, a, I had a friend and we were walking down the Baoshan district and there was a bunch of like around 20 kids after us, you know, going like, oh, Lawai, 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 you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. And then the first year, we were basically using sign language. Yeah, right. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yes. Chicken and pork, and I remember trying to go buy some chicken, you know, and we sort of forgot how to say, you know, chicken, chicken. In, in Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. So my friend was like, he points to a chicken egg and goes, "Tada, mama! I want the mom," you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to remember, at this time, there were no no phones with translations, and it right, was like this right. small Nokia phone. If you were lucky. And the little red Chinese book with the, the the dictionary that you carried in your pocket, you know. So yeah, things have really changed, and and I'm I'm very happy to be a part of the growth of this uh, city. Yes, absolutely. Wanted to ask one thing about uh, donating blood. 
I mean, sure, there's particular types of blood that ha are very common, but what what bloods, are, are, like you said, O blood before was a rare type. What sort of bloods are you sort of looking for, like in particular, like but that need more? Right now? Yes. If you have blood, we need you. Okay. <laughs> not, right. not even tomorrow, now, you know? Mm. So that's that's the, uh, the 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 urgency of that. So roughly, Shanghai needs around one thousand five hundred units of blood per day, right? Wow. There are days you get a few hundreds, and there's days you get probably hundred between hundred to two hundred, mm. right? So out of a thousand people in Shanghai, usually roughly around 10 to 15 people donate blood regularly. So the difference is huge, right? So, mm. and especially you have to understand during every Chinese New Year, there's a shortage of blood because a lot of people are traveling and the donors yes. are not there. And especially with the epidemic situation, that became even worse. Yes. And now, I mean, one of the events we do, and mind you, our next event is May 20, you know, coming up and it's, it's for children with cancer and blood disorders. My heart goes out to these children. Sometimes I go to these hospitals and I see these children there and, and their families really in need of blood, you know. I remember during the lockdown, I was willing to go out and donate blood in the lockdown because there was one kid who really needed it. Mm. And then I had donated on the last day before the lockdown and I donated the first day the lockdown ended, right? But uh, yeah, the need is very, very real and it's it's not even a joke. So. Yeah. I mean, this mission that we have started, I mean, for us, it's it's almost personal. You know, it's like when you have this person in need of blood and for expats, we've saved quite a few expats and locals. Yes. And last year, for instance, there was this uh, Indian boy, like a four year old. He doesn't have any. It's not his fault. Three or four year, right? And he's with a plastic anemia, need for blood, you know, constantly. Mm. And you almost feel this personal binding with this, yes. with this person in need, you know, and then you almost take it like a personal mission. I will do whatever it takes. Yes. And as bloodline, we'll do whatever it takes to make sure that this, this, this patient goes through it, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot more families out there that do not know bloodline or we do not know them. Yes. That's in need of blood. So it's something you can do very easily. You know, it's just a few minutes of your time. You roll up your yes. sleeves, you give blood and you've, you've, Bang. you've actually created a dream continuity of a dream for a family so uh, why not saving lives you know that's that's yeah. yeah you could be saving lives so wanted to also like besides doing this and besides being a surgeon you also i've also noticed that you also have a family workshop sporting activities uh tell us a little bit about this yeah. where do you fit the time <laughs> <laughs> very frankly i speak I, I sleep very little. I don't, I don't, <laughs> just to let you know, the bloodline, uh, WeChat pages, yes. the designs, those little souvenirs that we give out to uh, page, uh, to donors every time they come and donate blood, you know, I've I got, designed these. All I've got my, I've, I got my Frisbee and my, my backpack. <laughs> and <laughs> So I, I designed this myself. Right. You know, so I sleep very little. Uh, <laughs> I think the energy keeps me driving, but then. I work as a surgeon in a United Family Hospital, right? And uh, sports medicine, orthopedics, and yes. the hospital also in, in, in terms of community give back, we do some events for families and, and you know, just to, just to get them in touch in sync. It doesn't always have to be about being sick and coming to a hospital. It's also about wellness, you know? So that's, so I, as a part of that program, I also go out and help a lot, you know, like a uh, little tennis, tournaments in SRC or mm. Shanghai American School or for instance uh, like the last weekend with this family activities for little kids you know on sporting so cool. activities so I, I and a little talks about sports and uh, well-being yeah we most of the physicians here we like to be involved with the community involvement in this in these activities mm, absolutely social medias uh, Dr. Yeah. Maske uh, where can we find you and how do we get involved with donating blood in Shanghai? Okay. So my WeChat is available to everyone. Anyone okay. that needs it, it's very simple. S-U-R-G-E-O-N-A-M, all in one word. Like A-M for my initials, right? 
So surgeon M, all in a word. Anytime there's a need for blood, right? Or the your need to donate blood, right? Yes. <laughs> Reach out, you know, and then uh, we'd be happy to, you know, involve you in our activities, in the blood donations, and so on. I mean, you are never going to be uh, told to, you know, just go on your own way. If there's something you can give back to the community, either in terms of your time or blood or your involvement or just public awareness, you're always welcome with bloodline. In fact, for schools also, we do a lot of children that come and volunteer and we give them official social service credit hours. And we really encourage that you know, because we want these children to grow up with a mindset that this is the right thing to do. I mean, we've had students from SCIS come in and donate blood on the day they turned 18. Mm. And is there worked. is there an age limit? 18, start 18. from 18, right, right? right. And we organized the 18th birthday cake, and there, so he donates blood, and then we got this cake, and then, you know, with his friends. So we want to make so, a so special so moment cool. for, for these kids, you know? So, uh, yeah. I mean, welcome anytime, and then my Bloodline core members are there too, you know, and then we're all, we'd be very happy to welcome any of you into uh, voluntary activities. So we also work with a lot of other charities. So uh, any sort of, doesn't necessarily have to be blood donation. You may say, hey, I'm past that age, or I can't donate blood for whatever reason. There's many ways you can be involved through Bloodline with helping the community. Last question. Uh, who is your greatest inspiration slash hero and why? Who is my greatest inspiration slash hero, right? Well, I already told you about my dad, right? I think I took a lot of this thing uh, going forward from, uh, from my dad. But uh, another guy who has inspired me a lot is, do you know a, 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 a character by the name of Norman Bethune? No. He was a Canadian, right? And he was really during the, 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 the Civil War and in Spain, and then for, finally came to, uh, to China. He was a big uh, forefront, a, a leader uh, in, in, in terms of blood donations. So he helped a lot of people in all these countries and finally in China with, with uh, pioneering and establishing blood donations. At that time, that was pretty, uh, right? Wow. So, uh, the Spanish Civil War, you can imagine. So, normally, yeah. you look him up. He's, 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 he's quite something, quite a character. I definitely will. So, yeah. uh, Do Dr. Masque, thank you very much for your time. Uh, you're a true inspiration uh, to many people, and I really love that you're helping people out and having it as a charity. Uh, I just feel that's just fantastic and keep doing what you're doing and saving lives and making people happy and uh, I'm more than happy to promote uh, your uh, donation of blood anytime and you're welcome on back anytime. Yeah, and thank you so much and the little secret for that is we derive our energy and our passion from people like you and the community around us. So keep on sending all these positive vibes and these energies and the, and then and, and then that encouragement to keep on going, you know, and we promise you we will be there. Absolutely. All right, okay. Dr. Maske, thank you very much for your time. Okay. All the best. Okay. Bye-bye, Craig.